From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh ha ha. Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh ha ha. Enough with the Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D from Brooklyn with one of my first videos for 2018. First, I hope everybody had a good year, spent it with their family, and started the year off happy and healthy. And with that being said, we're going to start this year out with a series based on Reef Aquarium supplements. And now, those of you that know me know that I'm not a big chemical guy when it comes to dosing the aquariums. I don't use an automatic doser. All I use is my basic two-part, which is basically from Bulk Reef Supply, which I keep down here for my nano, my alkalinity, and my calcium. And I dose magnesium, which is the third component. But for 2018, I'm going to base this series on the status and effect that dosing different elements have on your aquarium and how you should dose them. And for this reason, I'm going to use Camp Marine one series of products. So Camp Marine has a calcium supplement. It has a strontium supplement. And it has the essential elements supplement, which contains various combinations of magnesium, a uh, smaller dosage of, uh, let me move it so you can see it. I'm just showing it so that I can see it. Let me zoom in. As you can see, it has magnesium, potassium, strontium, and uh, various lower doses of uh, elements that we don't even focus on. So basically, I'll take this one out of the mix and use this one that has the strontium element in it. Which is another reason why we want to talk about dosing, because sometimes we're dosing and uh, we don't know what or why we're dosing. And a lot of the times we don't test the aquarium. So for this experiment, we're going to look at the frag system as it is today in January before dosing these elements. Now, as you can see, as it stands today, the aquarium is very healthy. It's vibrant, no issues, no concerns. The colors are pretty natural here. Let's take a closer look. But uh, what I'll do is we'll focus on several corals as they are today, and then we'll check on their growth as the days go by, or rather weeks go by with the dosing of the elements. And specifically, we're gonna look at a few corals in particular. Now in the back, we have my chalices, which are already growing pretty nicely with the simple dosing of the two part and the magnesium. And I don't do a lot of water changes on it. I basically test the tank to make sure that the alkalinity is stable. I don't, toast for, I don't test for phosphates because I have never really tested for phosphates. I can definitely see in the change of colors whether the uh, water quality is diminishing or if there's an issue which affects the uh, polyp extension of a coral. Let's look at one particular. So the Pavona is a very fast grower, and as you can see, the polyps are extending nicely. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any additional growth in the uh, Pavona once we start dosing different trace elements. And if we move down, I also have the Pacillopora, which is just under it, which is quite uh, shaded by that, uh, by that large Pavona. And this Pacillopora, as well as the proprieties that is behind it, if I can get a closer look at that. So we're gonna look at the growth patterns in these two corals and see how the dosing, changes in the dosing, I should say, affect these corals directly. Now, these more delicate corals are some that I have in particular had a hard time with. I just acquired them from a friend who was taking his tank down for a move to the west coast so uh, trying corals that you haven't had success with in the past and looking at changes in their growth coloration in comparison to corals that you already have success with like pallies are very easy to grow they basically once they get established they're pretty pretty hardy but um with the dosing of trace elements such as strontium, which I have had 
quite a bit of success fit in the in the main reef upstairs but have not used in this system will be very interesting we want to look for any changes in coloration we want to have changes in structure and look for any changes in the growth pattern whether they grow outward they grow inward some uh, some will actually just uh, encrust on the coral versus growing out on the coral which is really an interesting mystery to me but I'm pretty sure that it definitely has close relation to the trace elements in the water and how much it, it, uh, it is used up by other corals in comparison to how much you're re-adding it to the system. So the two main components that I'm going to dose once again are going to be the Kent Essentials, the Elemental Essentials, and the Kent Liquid Calcium. Now the thing with the Kent Liquid Calcium is, let me get a zoom out here. The Kent Liquid Calcium, where people I know add this as a calcium supplement, usually do not add the alkalinity factor into the equation. Like the relationship between how much calcium is used and we add it to the water in comparison to the level of alkalinity in the water is very, very close relation, which is why. You know, me, I've only added two parts, alkalinity and calcium, which definitely you can see them play off of each other. When you see people with heavy coralline algae in the aquarium, they're usually dosing a lot of out two part. But I am going to use these two for the first week, and I'm going to track the progress of the coral and the water quality during this week, which means I'm going to add it every other day in a small small amount because this is a small system and for that i use my little itty bitty dosing tool my little d's doser here and i'm going to add about a little under four milliliters because the typical i'll probably add half a dose which i'll add two and a half milliliters because for a tank this small five milliliters in accordance with the instructions will dose 50 gallons so I'm going to do a little under half which would dose 25 gallons I will do about two milliliters it's always safer to start with a lower dosage than a full dosage or even a half if you can go lower and look for changes in coral pattern or coral color color coloration it's always a safer bet so hope you guys stay tuned for the progress in the tank and which is why you see me film a lot in the lower in the uh, frag system much easier to control the water parameters in a smaller system easier to plot changes there's not as many factors such as you know the nitrates and phosphates from having a heavy volume of fish such as uh, the main tank upstairs and it'll be an interesting experiment so click the subscribe button check back stay tuned and with that note being closed news on the brooklyn aquarium society for the month of january this coming friday's meeting is going to be a great one i hope to see you guys there coney island aquarium at aquarium at the education hall our speaker is going to be none other than the one and only Waru Joey, the king of DIY. If you guys don't know who Joey is, check out his YouTube channel. If you don't know who Joey is, you might be living under a rock. So I don't know what to tell you because the man has over, over 600,000 subscribers. And that's because he's fun to watch. Very informative. I've followed him uh, since he probably had 10,000 subscribers, maybe less. And it's going to be a fun night for all. So you got to be a member. If you're not a member, check us out on Instagram. It's going to be the regular $5 at the door for non-members, free for members. We look forward to seeing you there. Be careful in the snow, everybody. There's a lot of ice out there in the city, a lot of snow out there. So drive safe because ain't nobody going to take care of your fish tank if you're in the hospital. All right. So love, peace, and hair grease. This is D signing out. Keeping my sanity by keeping my aquariums, baby. Peace, and I'm out. See ya.
ですから